on the more optimistic side, DJ, a couple of players that you're buying in on compared to their draft position right now. So Fernando Tatis Jr. is number one for me. I've actually been trying to trade for him in every dynasty league that I'm in, but my league mates are a little too smart uh, because I think right now we're forgetting how good this guy is. Even coming off, yes, the fractured wrist, the PED suspension, that shoulder surgery. The last time we saw Tatis, he led the National League in home runs, and that was playing through a compromised shoulder. I mean, certainly his reputation has taken a hit, but he's one of the most talented players in the game. He's only going to miss the first 20 games this season as he finishes out that PED suspension. So that's basically like a stint on the injured list. And then you have a top five fantasy player from that day forward. To me, I'm not letting him fall past maybe late first round or early second round. That's how aggressive I want to be on him this year. Yeah, 19.75 ADP uh, for Tatis right now. Scott, are you as optimistic on Tatis when he returns? I think I'm neutral to Tatis. I think his ADP is fair for me. Okay. But um, I don't know. The shoulder makes me maybe a little bit more nervous than DJ does. But still, I mean, we know what Tatis' upside is. He could be the number one. He could be on your magazine next year. That's that's how good he is, the cover. So uh, the, the guy I'm targeting a little bit further down the ADP list is Willie Adamas, who I think is the most underrated shortstop in baseball. He's been a different player since he went to Milwaukee. And I don't know if part of it is the park. I don't know if part of it is he fixed an eye problem, that uh, a vision problem he was having. But his slugging percent has gone up by about 60 points. And last year, 31 home runs, 98 RBIs, and he misses about 25 games of the season. So, I mean, those numbers would have been a little bit more. Maybe it's just how our eye changes. If he drops in 111 runs and hits like 35 home runs, maybe people treat him differently. And I don't think he's a batting average drain. His career average is around 255. So I think you're going to get exquisite power from him, exquisite run production, and you might even get a plus average. And he's still at an age, you know, age 27 season. I don't know whether we've seen his best yet. Milwaukee is a good place for home runs. So I, again, sometimes the changes, we, we don't, it's not obvious stuff. It's not, not like every major media outlet wants to talk about Willie Adamas' eyesight, but he's fixed, the, he's corrected a, a problem he had. It's improved his pay, plate recognition, his slugging percentage is a lot higher in Milwaukee. And I think it's come with, with a lot less fanfare. The Brewers haven't been as interesting the last few years as Kristen Yelich is you know, hitting into another ground ball, a uh, double play as we, as we tape this podcast. But um, he's not... Willie Adams is not going to be the MVP. Yeah, again, he's not going to be on the cover of your magazine next year, but I think he's going to outkick his ADP by like three or four rounds. I totally agree with you. He's on my list as well. What you love about Adamas is he puts the ball in the air and he plays half of his games in one of the most uh, hitter-friendly ballparks in the sport. So I'm all in on Adamas too. Another name I wanted to mention is Corey Seager. Now you look at his first season in Texas, hit 245, which is just not what Corey Seager does. And Despite that batting average last year, he hit the ball extremely hard. His XBA was at 283, which is basically right in line with his career average. And he was really hurt by the shift last year. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike Petriello of MLB.com, a uh, friend of the show here, recently estimated that Seager lost 20 hits uh, compared to if the shift restrictions were in place already, uh, like they're going to be this year in 2023. So I, th I expect that batting average to come back to where it usually is and for those lovely counting stats to be there as well. Probably more RBIs, probably more runs scored as a result of not losing as many hits as he did last year. So I'm in on Seager. His ADP right now is 67.14 on NFC. So if you miss out on those top that top wave of shortstops, I think you should feel pretty good about Seager. Love the Seager call. Second year after a big contract. So he's he's got everything figured out in Texas about how his life is rooted. And we know one of the big stories of the year is, you know, how are these new rules going to change things? When people say to me, who's going to benefit the most from the shift? The first name I think of is Corey Seager.